me You know I need that I'm going to meet you Don't you know it ain't no use to run I'm here to take you with me And here to take you to There's a slow down She's offering me money for you But I'm going to keep you for myself I'm going to kill you dead and bury you I'm going to dig you up for fun I'm going to stand and watch the balls It's going to beat up your bones I'm going to take my wedding butcher I'm going to chop you two and two I'm going to shock you to pieces just big enough for school When I get through everybody go to ball Go, go, go Hey, welcome back to our worldwide audience of art viewers and art lovers, paint heads. It's James Conley, half to ask reporter, the guy on the bike. Special shout out to our viewers in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Southern Rhineland in Germany and Guadalajara. We're at Canada and we're gonna take a view, a guided view of an exhibition by this young lady, Catherine Bradford, and the title of the show is Mother Paintings. Come on in. <laughs> yes, Mother. Anything you'd like. Well, uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to, and it's after closing time, well after closing time, one of the reasons I wanted to come in and uh, take a little run through of the show with you is that uh, you are maybe one of the people that we've been following the longest on the Calm Report. I think we did our first report, tell me, 15 years ago, like something like that? How you done? You're Ed Thorpe? Yeah, you've done three or four shows of mine. Well, <laughs> you're one of the, one of the uh, Williamsburg painters that we've been following even before we started doing video, so that's 25 years, something like that. Do Time you, goes by. Do you try and only do Brooklyn and Williamsburg painters? No, I'll do anything, but I have to admit that I, I feel a kinship to our Brooklyn painting community, so when I see some of our old, <clears throat> maybe not so old, painting friends, I make a point of trying to follow them and uh, do reports and get the word out to the rest of the world. It's fantastic. Let me, let me make a little sweep here, Kathy, and we'll just go over and sort of see what we've got hanging here. How many paintings do you have in the show, Kathy? There are six in this room, and there are two big ones in the smaller room. And one small painting. So it's mostly these big paintings. You remember when I used to do really small ones? Well, I remember when you used to do really small ones, but that was not all you did because you did some large paintings. I remember you, I think, talking about your first show, you had a lot of shows, uh, paintings with ships in there. The ships were big, but the people were small. Right. I think this is the first show where I made the people be the landscape. And the ground of the, of the, of the paintings. Yeah. Where would you like to start? We'll just stroll along and have a little chat. Okay. Wherever you want. Let's start over here. You know, you were talking about uh, making the, the figures, the landscape, and I was thinking that um, in a lot of ways, you've really kind of expanded your areas of flat color. And in certain ways, this kind of relates to uh, New York color field painting, except that then you've, uh, you've added in your, your figures. Uh, you know, I was thinking of Motherwell. He would put ah. this bright orange with blue, you know, his collages with the G Yes, cigarettes. the cigarette packs. And also the, the lines, he would take a dark line and that would be the whole painting? Well, that was the other thing I was noticing is that the, the lines seem to be getting thicker and what ends up happening is the lines thicken as they become more than just lines, they actually become little fields of color in their own right and uh, a lot of people say that there is either drawing or there's color but if you can start getting the color drawing in there you got the best of both worlds. Let's go over to the next well, one here. At one point I, I, re I realized I had no lines in my painting and, and I 
thought that was a shame. It was just edges coming up, flat planes of... blocks of color. Right. And okay. fields of color with, with dogs making the figures. Also, you know, we had talked over the years about you switched from oil paint about, what, eight or nine years ago, ten years right. ago? And um, I was talking to Phil last night when I came up and I was looking at one of the paintings that's in the office and uh, I was kind of questioning him. I said, is this, is this straight acrylic? He said, yeah, but uh, would you say that you've kind of um, maybe learned how to get some more interesting surface effects with the acrylics? You know, I mean, because that's... That's one of the things that people love oil paint for is because you can get the, the mixtures of the mattes and the shinies and uh, various kind of glazing things happening. I just use water, and, but I keep my brushes in a jar of water and I don't wash them. So when I come to paint something like this, it has a little bit of the, another color on it. And that, and that gives it a kind of character. I think when I painted this, the white brush had some pink on it. So you don't use any mediums or anything like that? No, No, I don't. It's no too, gels or any of that? It's too confusing. It's too much. I can't handle it. Okay, and this piece is titled Motherhood. Motherhood. Acrylic on canvas is 80 by 68. This is Mother's Lap. I did this over the summer in the middle of heavy pandemic, pandemic stress all around me. And I felt that a mother's lap might be where one would want to be during a pandemic. As long as mother didn't have the virus and was passing it on to you, but... Well, I wasn't thinking of the virus. I was just thinking of comfort. The comfort. And caregiving. Yeah, that's one of the things I also wanted to ask you about was the title of the show. And uh, Phil was saying it was kind of about the, the healing, the nurturing part of being a mother, which you are, well, right? And but it's, I think it's about the nurturing part of the whole year we've been, been through. Yes. We had to take care of each other. That's why they said wear a mask, because you're helping other people. Also, I was uh, thinking that you were talking about not cleaning your brushes, but I'm just kind of looking at this and thinking you've got a wonderful uh, variations of, on the color of red, you know, everything from like an almost an orangish red into a cad red medium into almost a, a, an alizarin. So the color things are really starting to, you know, get much more complex. And I think you were talking about when you were talking about the layering on of the colors. But, but the thing that was hard for me was not to go back into the painting and try and correct it and make it look finished. A lot of people ask me if my work is finished. And I always hope it's finished, but I, I don't know. But, but I had to leave it alone. I had to learn how to leave it alone. Even though when it didn't make And it only took you how long to figure that one out? A long time. 60 years of painting before. I mean, it, it was a, a certain kind of confidence that what I had done was, was going to stick. Well, so consider this little piece we're looking at here, the textural brushwork that's underneath there. Is that just another layer of paint under there? Is that the gesso that you were using to prime these with, or? I think I put purple over pink. Purple over pink. Which is something I But you were saying you don't add, you don't add mediums and gels and modeling paste and all that other stuff. But I, but I pay a lot of attention to what brush I use. You see, I used a very little brush here. Well, and then a little is relative. This, this is this thick, but up here there are probably brushes this thick. 
you know, I'll get over here on the side and I see, see if we can get the viewers to kind of notice what I was talking about of uh, some of the areas seem to be more matte, some of them are a little more shiny. And I don't know whether that's just because you have more paint build up at certain places and it kind of closes out the weave or exactly how that works. But would you say that you've kind of acquired a, uh, a cuisine, a knowledge of the cuisine of uh, acrylic paint? I don't know about cuisine. Cuisine? <laughs> that's okay. Well, come on, Mom. You <laughs> Mothers always are good cooks, right? Let's see what the title. You know, you know as well as anyone that I started out as an abstract painter. Yes. So I approach these rectangles almost like a grid. And I, I would get frustrated that all the people were upright. And I would yearn for an area of horizontal shape. And that's how this white figure got in there. This I, is titled Upsetting Times 2020. Right. The, the figure, the white figure, I wanted to have just flying across the top, but I made the white figure fit into an area that I thought it needed a little attention. And, that, and that's the kind of decision an abstract painter would make. Well, when you think about figurative painting, abstract painting, are there any artists in particular that you kind of think about and uh, maybe use as a, not a, someone to follow, but maybe as an example of someone that's doing things that you would like to kind of pursue, maybe? I, I am. Like Diebenkorn, maybe? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm like every other painter. I look at Matisse, bold decisions. Right. And, and I look at Philip Guston, I think everybody's looking at Philip Guston, whether you're a abstract or a figurative or a surrealist or anything else that's happening and these I, days. And I look at Rose Wiley, who's about to have a show at David's Warner. I know, we're going to try to get over and get a show of Rose's in... I actually saw her work at a, an art fair maybe four or five years ago and was just astounded. And then I find out, gee, she's a superstar in, in England. bus stop yes that was what I was also going to comment on is these are all these are all big like they're wonderful. They're, they're six like, oh, by eight yeah, feet or so well. seven and a half by eight feet something like that but you see what I mean about the horizontals I I think when I felt this painting was finished was when I had put stripes on it like Chris Martin or Stanley Whitney color next to color Exactly. Or Rothko. Well, that's what I was saying, that they kind of relate in a certain way to New York color field painters. Uh, how about, we were talking about the uh, fluorescent colors. You're still using those, but those have actually, you've been able to kind of work them in so they're not so jarring, and they actually <laughs> kind of feel like they're part of the palette instead of something that's kind of crept in from uh, Mars or... Some, uh, some electric world. Yeah, I remember you took issue with that. Well, Acid green painting. It, it wasn't that I was taking issue with it. It was I, was, I was asking about whether or not you could get that kind of a color using oil, and you said no, and that was one of the reasons that you, or maybe that was one of the things that happened when you switched to acrylic. This is called Mother Joints the Circus. Mother Joints the Circus. Is this based on... <laughs> A true life story, or? <laughs> well, I I sometimes feel that my children felt I joined the circus when I when became you an artist. Well, <laughs> they weren't far wrong, were they? <laughs> but I love the circus. I love circus people. We're we're paid to be ourselves. We're paid to be freaks. And to put on a show and to entertain people and give people things to talk about. Also, you've got some stuff collaged in here. Is that just more canvas or is that somebody's pants or? No. When I, these two figures, the heads were right up here. Yes. And, and I, I thought they were, they, they were not interesting and it really bothered me. And I thought if I put 
a patch of canvas on the heads that, that something interesting was bound to happen, but guess what? It, it still looked rather boring, and I realized what was wrong was these figures had to <laughs> lean over. They were too stiff, and once I got a little bit of diagonal and moved the heads over here, then the painting had some movement to it. The patches remained, and they're sort of the counterpoint to the two figures leaning over. Okay, so this is 60 by 72, so five by six feet. Okay, Kathy, let's go up and uh, talk about the second gallery. Okay, this is the second gallery, or sometimes called the project room. We can get through this really fast. There's only three paintings in here. Okay, let's pan over and get them. You know, I know I was talking about the color school thing in certain ways, and you sort of said this as well. You could almost drop out the figures and just, these could just be kind of flat areas of color and they would still be beautiful, successful paintings. But you want to keep the figures in there and go, you know, keep your narrative. It's not so much a narrative. I, I realized that I was yearning for a more emotional statement. And a certain kind of intimacy, vulnerability. And I would go to the opera and they'd be singing at the top of their lips. You go to the opera? Yeah. Okay. And people would be crying, and I and I thought that us in the art world weren't getting to that level. I, yeah, I wanted my paintings to be almost operatic. I, I wanted them. I wanted to have a lot of feeling in them. A lot of feeling. They must sign a mond gekust. <laughs> What's that mean? Uh, it's a line from an opera, I'm, I'm told. I think it's Wagner. It's like, whose mouth did you kiss? Okay, so this is Singular Man. Another big painting, 80 by 68. Let's look at this one. You know, you did a... I think they were up at... Uh, someplace on the Bowery, you did a whole show of just, like... Swimmers at night? Yes. And an entire that, gallery filled with them? I did that at Speroni Westwater. Speroni Westwater. Yes. Yeah, I love dark paintings. And, and this, remember my last show I had a table? With yes, I do remember. And it was all done in red lines. So this, this is people gathered around the table, but there's, there's a guest coming in. And, and we, there's been kind of a conversation about whether this guest was invited or not invited to the dinner party. And the guest is wearing a little black dress, it looks like. Yeah, a cocktail dress. Now, how, would you, how long would you normally work on a piece like this? Well, it had different lives because this yes. figure was at the bottom at one point and then it had three muses above it, but then I turned it upright and realized that this standing figure had a certain power. But what was the standing figure looking at? And then I sort of brushed very quickly in the this figure, being alone, was looking at people that were all happily... Having dinner. <laughs> I've got one more question I'd like to ask you before we look at the, uh, the last piece here, and that is, how does it feel to be one of the hottest painters in New York now? You know, I've watched one your career. The, one of the oddest? <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> One of the hottest, most popular, most well-respected, most recognized painters in New York. I mean, it's not like it's an overnight success, but I think you have achieved uh, what I would call international recognition as a painter. So am I embarrassing you? Yes, you are. 
Okay, well, it's true. All right, so we won't go on with that. Uh, this is called magenta free. It's, this is a little like my old swimming paintings with a kind of hazy. I was going to say we didn't see too many of the swimming paintings in this show, right? Is that these are more, more of your mothers in interiors and figures in interiors? I, I think it was a good idea to to have the show be a new body of work, don't you think? Always. To, sh to show that I'm, I'm growing in some way? Well, that was what I said about the last show when I kind of came in and did a walk around, was that I'm always impressed with the... Um, I mean, they can tell that you're, there are your paintings, but you always kind of change up the subject matter. I was talking about the initial pieces that I saw when you're painting the ships, and then there was the swimmers, and there was the supermen, and uh, various other characters and things like that. So I think this is kind of a... Uh, a continuation on that development and evolution. Anyway, uh, thank you for taking the time. Gallery's been closed for darn near an hour. Thank you so much. And uh, it's like I said, we got to keep track of you now <laughs> that you're the, the young hot painter in New York. Anyway, Kathy Bradford, and as always, you're uh, nurturing me almost like a kid, I guess, and all of our viewers. So the mother, the mother of mother painting here, what was the title of the show again, Motherly? It's, the title of the show is Mother Paintings. Mother Paintings, mother paintings. The all right. The painting themselves are the mothers. All right, and so are the painters. So this has been James Calm reporting on Kathy Bradford's mother paintings here in Canada. And you can like this, share, post it on all your social media sites. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We just ask you to say thank you, Catherine and Kate. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? Kid Krill. Kid Krill. All right. Like what the whales eat. All right. I've heard you before. Where? Down in New Orleans? 